Hello, and welcome back to this ongoing series of how to integrate Ink into Godot. So we've already integrated Ink into Godot, and we've successfully added some choices here that allow us to make some choices and to continue on our story and explore what these two characters want to talk about. So before getting back into Godot, I'm just going to show how I expanded my very simple story in Ink. You'll notice here in my expanded story, I have some new story lets. Um, it's just a continuation of the conversation that they had previously. I've also identified which characters are talking with M and F to stand for male and female in this instance. And you'll also notice that I've added some variables. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to use ink uh, and the way that ink uses its own custom language for doing branching narratives. I would highly recommend Dan Cox's course on this. Uh, it's a really excellent resource for getting started with ink and understanding how to use it. But suffice to say that I've added some variables and I'm changing some values of those variables, basically toggling between different Booleans to determine when something is true or false. These variables I'm mapping to uh, different kind of facial expressions that the characters will have when they're speaking. So you'll see that I have male neutral, female neutral, male happy, female happy, male anger, female nervous. Um, and those just map to the icons that I created. You can actually see that in the background over here to the sprites that will then get plugged in to our various nodes. So in my experience, I found that you not only need to set the value that you want to uh, change things to be true, but you also need to toggle off the value that you had previously been using that might dictate some behavior in your scene. This might be a little bit of overkill with the update that uh, the developers of InkGD have done, um, but I found that it's just a very, it's a handy kind of uh, stopgap safe measure that you can use in order to make sure that you're not accidentally trying to do two things at once. So this ink story is not too overly complex and to give us a sense of how it reads slash plays, you know, hello, hey F, how was your first day of class? Great, the teacher was really friendly. Continue, uh, what about you? It was excellent. I got signed into the elective I wanted. So an eventful day. I should go, cool, see you around, end. Okay, and then that's the end. So we're gonna kind of revisit this in, in all of that stuff in just one second, but we wanna have each one of those little storylets to have something to change our icons here. So let's get into it. I'm going to open up the ink handler script that we've been working with, and you'll notice that I've tried to do a little bit more cleanup to the script to get rid of all the comments that I don't feel are necessary to block some of our script, you know, in such a way that is a little bit easier to read and allows for our script to be a little bit more kind of quote unquote flowy. So I could definitely go in and clean up this a little bit more, but um, for our intents and purposes right now, uh, this is totally fine. So in order for our script here to interpret and read the variables from ink, we need to do two things. The first thing that we want to do is that we want to uncomment observe variables. So if I just delete the comment there, this will run a function called observe variables in the story loaded function at the very top. And again, this story loaded function is asking if that was successful or if it was not successful, then to say not loaded, uh, but that if that doesn't pass, then to go to continue story. So observe variables runs as a function before continue story. And this is actually very helpful for us. Um, these things happen almost simultaneously, of course, but in the kind of stack that we have here, observe variables is going to happen before continue story is called. So every time that continue story then does get called, this continues to observe our variables. So I'm going to scroll down to where observe variables is located. And when we first loaded in this template, these two functions had been commented out. Now I've uncommented them for in preparation for this lesson today. So go ahead and do that yourself. In fact, I forgot to uncomment this one line here. So we have func observe variables, a function to do that. And this has ink player, which again maps to the ink player that we've right loaded into our scene, this add child ink player. And then it 
calls a custom function called observe variables, which is a function that the developers have uh, made for us that allow us to uh, add in variables here that we can look for. And it connects that, if you will, or it sends a signal to see if we can then see if those variables have changed. So the nice thing about this is that we can add all of the variables that we want to here. And then in variables changed, when we see that a variable has changed, we can obviously execute some code. So what I'm first going to do is that I'm going to double check what variable is probably going to be called first. And I'm going to look for f happy, female happy, this variable. So in the array of arguments that I have here, I'm going to check for the string f happy. And what I'm going to say is that I'm not going to change anything else about the variable change function down here. And instead, I'm going to observe this print value that gets output here at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. And I'm going to observe down here in the output this print statement that says variable f happy has changed to 1. And because we're working with Booleans, the way that InkGD interprets those Boolean values uh, or those Boolean variables, I should say, from ink is that it returns a zero or a one. So one meaning true and zero meaning false. So what I can do here, besides printing this variable, is that I can check to see if that variable has done anything. So I can say if, right, variable name is equal to f happy and the new value is equal to one, then, you know, do some, get something, execute something here to change or modify something about my scene. And the way that I'm going to do this is that I'm going to load in our different icons at the very top of our script. So I'm going to go underneath here where I've loaded some other variables. I'm going to say on ready var, and I'll say f happy icon. And I'll say load to load the resource in. And I'm going to right click on the icon. For me, that's female zero one smile. And I will load in right that resource path there. So back down here in my if statement. Oh, and the other thing that I probably want to do, well, I'll, I'll just use the selector since again, our hierarchy is pretty easy to, to navigate here. So I'll say female dot texture because the texture variable right here is the variable that I want to change. Dot texture equals f happy icon. Okay. So let's just go ahead and see if that works. So I click on great and I get that icon back. Perfect. Now you can actually see, since we still have our, our print here, that F happy has been changed back to zero. So what I could do here is that I could set a kind of a number of different if statements or a number of different checking here to say, you know, if and then else, or I probably want to say elif variable underscore name equals f happy and new value equals zero, then you know, female dot texture equals, and I probably want to load in my neutral here. So I'll go ahead and do that on ready bar f neutral icon equals load resource path, copy that resource path from my resource folder. And I will say that this is equal to F neutral icon. So I get great, continue, and then I return back to kind of the quote unquote default and or starting expression of this character. 
So I can obviously go in and, and continue to do these variables for these other individuals. Um, but for our intents and purposes, we don't really need to go that much further to understand how this observed material, excuse me, this observed variables function works. It looks for the different uh, variables that we have in our story. And then you can check to see what those variables are and execute some codes based upon you know, particular uh, logic checks that you have in your subsequent function. One last thing that I'll just kind of mention here, and you might have even seen this in the ink template when you first loaded this in, is that you we can check obviously more than one variable here. You just have to make sure that there are strings listed in this array. So you know, I can search for uh, uh, f nervous. I could search for f neutral. Right, and that might be a better way of checking this, right? Instead of doing um, f happy kind of on and off, I could just check to see if f neutral is true, and then make sure you know that I have f neutral always set to true in places that I want you know f neutral to be true, and when this right triggers, then it will reset that expression on the character, right? That might be a better way of doing this than having a lot of kind of if and elif statements, okay? But yes, just to kind of reiterate uh, this point that for all of the variables that you want to check in your ink story, you list them here in this array as strings, and then we check those strings against this variable change here and change the script according to our preference. Okay, that's how we get Godot to interpret and read the variables from our ink story and have things change in our scene. I hope that this was helpful. Um, we're going to continue on in the next lesson to just do a little bit of cleanup and to look at one last bit of functionality within InkGD that might be helpful for you. Um, but looking forward to wrapping this up and talk to you soon.